Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. As we've talked about, uh, in my mind, you know, the, the, the clock is going. And, and although our fe- I feel like our starters are in a great spot uh, for September 11th, and that's where our emphasis is really on, um, there's a lot of jobs we got to still allow to uh, play themselves out so we feel good about the overall depth of our team, and, and uh, we'll certainly allow that to happen this week. A little, little foreshadowing, perhaps. It's funny, ah. I was actually staring at that full quote, like the, the two-minute version of it that Seifert put out, and it was Kevin O'Connell basically after uh, the debacle that we all witnessed this weekend. He was asked, are you confident in your backup quarterbacks? And that was kind of the second part of it. The first part of it was him tap dancing for a minute. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, ultimately... Yeah. Uh, Our starters you know, are good. Uh, yeah, well... Uh, so uh, this is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We do have some breaking Vikings news. They have uh, come to the same conclusion we did, which is they don't have QB2 on the roster, so they traded for Nick Mullins right before we clicked record on this episode. So we're going to dive into it. It's Mackie. It's our executive producer, Declan. Uh, we're kind of kind of grinding through the the injury list here on Purple Daily this week. So <laughs> yeah. uh, an update yeah. on Judd. So uh, if you missed it on yesterday's episode, Judd underwent an emergency appendectomy on Saturday night. Judd, Judd actually grinded through the Friday recording of Purple Daily with a borderline ruptured appendix. Football. So yeah. shout out to Judd. Uh, so he is, and and he was going to be in the hospital for at least a couple of days. He's still in the hospital here on this Monday. He is so, sort of day to day in terms of when he can go home. And then, uh, of course, as luck would have it, I avoided COVID for two and a half years. Started feeling like crap yesterday. Tested positive for COVID for the first time. Grinding through this, this episode. Yeah. My God. Remember that airplane story I told you guys last week? Yeah, the handkerchief. Uh, this is why I remember my mom told me, like, you know, a gentleman always carries a handkerchief, and I was always like, you know, that's disgusting. I think I think that was maybe a thing, mom, in the sixties and seventies when you were maybe growing up and as a teenager. I can't think of a more disgusting thing in the world to just be bottling up in your pocket than your own snot, dude. I kn- I Gross. knew this was gonna happen. I'm sitting in a, in a window seat. The guy in the middle who moved over to the op- the only open seat on the entire plane so that his yeah. wife could move over across the aisle. And he spent four hours coughing and blowing his nose into a handkerchief and then putting it back in his pocket and then touching the armrest. And I'm just sitting there mortified for four hours. And here we are. Uh, so anyhow, um, I guess if you were to rank emergency appendectomy... <laughs> getting knocked on your ass with COVID or watching one more game of Sean Mannion and Kellen Mond try to be the backup Oof. quarterback for this team. I think the most torturous might be the backup quarterback situation. Tom Pelissero <laughs> tweeted this out this morning. Trade. The Raiders are sending quarterback Nick Mullins to the Vikings for a conditional seventh round pick in 2024. So two years from now, uh, somebody else did some reporting on this and said that the the pick is conditional but if Mullins is active for one game with the Vikings in 2022, which I think he would be, as of now, active for all of the games Probably. as the back yeah. quarterback, then the Vikings would give a 2024 seventh round pick. Uh, the Vikings have been watching the same garbage we have with Sean Mannion throughout the preseason. Mon showed some flashes for the second part of the first preseason game that had some people excited, and I pushed back on Judd a little bit, but ultimately at the end of the day, at some point, you're facing second string, third string guys. One of these two dudes has to start carving these defenses, these vanilla defenses yeah. full of second and third stringers. And they didn't. And the Vikings waited less than 48 hours to make a change. So uh, Nick Mullins is not amazing. We'll go through the bio here in a second. But he is uh, at least better and more proven than the guys they currently have on the roster. And he has four years of Shanahan offense experience from his time in San Francisco, Dex. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was talking about with you yesterday about how I think it's it, you should prioritize finding a quarterback who has actually been there and done that and has started games. And Nick Mullins has done that. I mean, it, is he a perfect quarterback? Is he a QB1 on his 32 teams? No, but he is this exact quality backup that you could start in a pinch and can potentially win you a game and you're not completely shipwrecked if he has to do so. Um, and and if, if this is a guy, too, that comes from Kyle Shanahan's system, um, who had to start a lot of games for them in 2018 and actually played pretty decently when you really think about it. And, and that's a credit to Shanahan, too, for just being an offensive genius that can plug in 
some guy like Nick Mullins and still lead the team to some type of wins. Um, I remember watching him just two weeks ago when the Vikings played the Raiders, and I think I said to Doogie and Judd on a scoop episode, a bonus scoops episode on Mackie and Judd, that I wouldn't mind either of those guys in Jared Stidham and Nick Mullins. I know our guy Jason Fitz, too, of ESPN Radio, was kind of talking about that during the Vikings-Raiders game that the Raiders really want to go and prioritize finding a backup QB to Derek Carr. If something happens to Derek Carr, that season is absolutely lost. And look, if that that's still true, right? If they lost Derek Carr and Jared Stidham has to start significant games, the Raiders' uh, chance of having a successful season kind of goes down the tube. But at least it, it, there's a viable option there. Like Nick Mullins and Jarrett Stidham are viable options behind a Derek Carr if he has to miss a game or two. And now the Vikings get him here. And if he has to start, and again, it's just a break glass in case of emergency situation. Kirk's been an Iron Man. I don't envision Nick Mullins having to start, or am I, nor do I want him to start significant games. But I do feel better if he has to start a game if Kirk misses one or two. Yes. Well, he's he's his teams have won five NFL games in the regular season that he has started. So that's a that's five more than Mond and Mannion combined. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what I would do here going forward in a second. We should shout out our friends to a TCL. Uh, no matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. And TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL bringing you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. Also, thank you guys for sending all of your photos from the stadium this weekend yeah. of the Before I Die Surly Can, the tall boy. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Just this this rallying cry that we started throwing out there two or three years ago on Purple Daily. I think it started with people asking, "Why are you guys so negative about the Vikings? You guys are more negative yeah. than the radio station over here or some other podcasters." And well, we're not negative. I think we we just hold the Vikings to a standard. They've been around for mm-hmm. sixty years. We we want them to win a Super Bowl at some point before we die. And we just started explaining. You know, two or three years ago, that's our ethos here on this show. And now to see it on a on a surly beer can uh, in a stadium of sixty or seventy thousand people is pretty badass. So, thanks it's to Surly awesome. for bringing that to life. I love my surly beverages. I love all of them. And now that if you can go to the Viking Stadium and get one of those bad boys, I think that's incredible. Show us your cans has now evolved into that as well. So I'm sure every Sunday, which we're, and we already saw that, right? Like at Vikings games, we saw Furious as we saw a bunch of those cans being shown. Uh, but now we get to see them at Vikings games. I think it's an awesome partnership. Shout out to Surly Brewing. Yes. Um, So Nick Mullins, second best quarterback, by the way, in Southern Mississippi history next to Brett Favre. I think he was undrafted in 2017, spent four years in that 49ers Shanahan offense. So there's some familiarity with what the Vikings are trying to do here offensively. So if there was any sort of, well, but Sean Mannion kind of speaks the system language and he can be a a safety blanket for Kirk in the film room, etc. Well, I think Nick Mullins checks that box just as much and can come in and maybe give you a chance not to go four and oh if Kirk misses a month, but maybe win a game or two, right? Uh seventeen starts for Nick Mullins, largely with San Francisco. His teams are five and twelve in those games, but again, that's five more wins than uh Mannion or Mond have in the NFL. And um I think this decision was probably still up in the air going into the second preseason game. But once you <laughs> Once you watched, okay, these guys, these guys are getting a second look against second and third stringers, and you see some of the most mind-numbing interceptions. In fairness to Mannion, he did have a couple drops that probably hindered his yeah. uh, his numbers, but I don't know how you can come away from that second preseason game feeling confident that, yeah, if Kirk Cousins goes down, we can trick this thing up and maybe win a game or two. In fact, uh, Nick Mullins, if you go back to 2018, his first ever start in the NFL. So he was undrafted 2017, and then 2018, uh, he comes in in week nine against Oakland. All right, dude, this is your first ever time playing in an NFL game. And he throws for 262 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and they beat Oakland, uh, San Francisco, 34-3 to in that game. Now, there's also some other clunkers in there where he'll throw two or three interceptions. Uh, I am not saying that this is the second coming of... You know, Tom Brady taking over for right. uh, Drew Bledsoe 20 years ago. But, yes, he gives you a chance to throw for 250 or 300 yards. It gives you a chance to maybe score 24 or 30 points in a game. So uh, I'm glad they fixed this. I'm glad they weren't stubborn saying, no, we can we can make this work. <laughs> if we just, we could just, uh, you know, let's, let's try a third preseason game. And a seventh-round pick is barely anything. So I love this move, Dex, and I'm glad the Vikings did it. 
Yeah, I mean, he basically has, you know, a full season's worth of starts in his career. He's started 17 games, and I, yeah, he's only won five of them. But the dude has thrown 26 touchdowns to 22 picks in his career. So he can step in in a pinch and potentially win you a game. And I think that's all you want in a backup quarterback. And and to be honest, if, if he's kind of bounced around a little bit, he had a, just a wild, I think, 2021. He spent time on two different practice squads. Ended up starting a game for the Browns last year in a pinch when Baker Mayfield yeah. had COVID and and just kind of thrown in the fire a little bit. But I mean, to to circle back to our conversation ye- uh, yesterday and just and previously too, the Vikings have had a history of backup QBs stepping in and winning games for them throughout their entire history, and it kind of seems like since Kirk that hasn't been the case. I mean, Joe Webb came off the street in Philadelphia and beat like the best, uh, one of the best teams in the NFC in that crazy Snowmageddon game in Philly about 10 years ago. They've had situations where backups have stepped in and done this. Case Keenum being obviously the prime example. Randall Cunningham was on, was on the street, right? Like he wasn't even playing football the year before and wins Offensive Player of the Year. Now, those guys ended up starting significant time because of injuries and whatnot, but I, I just feel a lot better with Nick Mullins having to start a game than someone like Kellen Mond, who clearly just isn't ready yet, and that's okay. Like, yeah. let him bake for a little bit more. Let him learn the system. But Sean Mannion at this point, man, like, if, if he's occupying a 53-man roster spot, and if it's simply because of Kirk, I don't understand just the hand-holding that has to take place there. You need the best possible players on your roster. KLC said it on, on the top of this clip and after the game on Saturday. We have to evaluate and figure out all right, our starters are really solid, but our backups, there are significant question marks here. And shout out to Kwesi. I think they're just going out there on August 22nd instead of waiting for the third preseason game and just getting a QB. I think it's it's a it's a solid move by Kwesi to say, hey, no, we're gonna we're gonna get this guy right now. It's gonna make our roster and that position group better. I'm a fan of the move. Yeah, I would uh and maybe there's some question about this, but I would I would say goodbye to Mannion and keep Mond. Yeah. I don't know if anyone would debate that uh, unless they've just seen so little from Mond. And, you know, it's funny because our uh, our fallen friend in the emergency room right now, Judd Zolgad, has been taking a lot of heat from Vikings fans for saying, this is what I'm seeing at practice. Kellen Mond yeah. is clueless. He's not making reads quick enough. Everything's too fast for him. And uh, one or two good drives in the first preseason game don't negate, you know, three or four weeks of practice and OTAs and in mini camps. I would still, despite how bad he's been, uh, you know, by the reports of Judd and others, I would keep him as QB three. I don't think you can sneak him onto a practice squad. If, I think another team would probably claim him as a QB three because he was a third round pick. There were yeah. some teams I'm sure that were high on him, see some potential. So to me, this signifies, and again, I don't know that anyone watching or listening to this show would really die on a hill for Sean Mannion at this point, but I think this signifies the end for Mannion in a Vikings uniform and not Mond. Although the Rams, because, you know, we have to compare uh, everything Vikings related these days to the Rams the last three or four years, because that's the ecosystem that the Vikings uh, plucked Kevin O'Connell from. The Rams had a couple years, I'm pretty sure, where they only had two quarterbacks on the roster. So that's another thing we don't know. I think the Vikings are keeping three quarterbacks, but is there a chance they could keep two? And Nick Mullins is the second one? Uh, yes, but my guess is it's Kirk Cousins, QB1, Nick Mullins, QB2, and then Kellen Mond as the developmental QB3, and Sean Mannion is coaching, I don't know, college somewhere in a year and a half from now. And it, and honestly, if Mannion literally like retires and I think comes back as, you know, what's Zimmer's role with Deion Sanders, like an analyst to the to, to his college football staff? Yeah. If Sean Mannion wants to come back as an analyst to the Vikings offense or however the hell, yeah. whatever title you want to give him, I'm okay with that. I, yeah, I don't mind the guy. Special assistant to Kevin O'Connell, yeah. whatever you want to he, do. Yeah. He clearly is smart enough that that his brain, honestly, has kept him in the NFL for as long as it's had. It's not his play, that's clear. It, it, it's his brain and his tutelage in the quarterback room that has kept him in the NFL as long as it has. And if he wants to come back as a coach, I'm all for that. But at this point, um, I'd rather have Mullins your QB too. And if Kellen Mond, you don't have to move him to the practice squad to you know, risk being taken off waiver, which I agree. I think another team would probably take a stab at him to say, hey, third round pick, four-year start at Texas A&M, let's see what we got here. I'd much rather them just have three quarterbacks on the roster, let Kellen Mond be that third guy, continue to learn. And if Nick Mullins has to be your QB2 to start a game or two, I think the Vikings feel a lot better about that than having to start Sean Mannion or Kellen Mond. Yeah. By the way, we have more breaking quarterback news here. Oh, do we? You want to know why Tom Brady was gone? Oh, God. This is interesting. So he was just kind of gone for like two and a half weeks, wasn't posting anything on social media. 
I think he wished his son Jack a happy 15th birthday like this morning and, and on, on Instagram for the first time in three weeks, and now he's back at Bucks practice. League sources indicated Tom Brady's time away from the team included a trip to the Bahamas at an exclusive resort and was primarily for family time with his wife, Giselle. His commitment to family and having a personal life was at the heart of this hiatus from football, and there was no medical emergency as speculated or other reasons. I love it. Like yeah. Brett Favre had to kind of hem and haw because he didn't want to go to training camp in Mankato. He said, I'll just, I'll just join you with like a couple weeks to go in 2009 before the season starts. And Brady was probably doing the same thing, right? <laughs> Do I really need to be out here grinding in the sun? Listen, I've been grinding my whole career. I, I want to go to the Bahamas with my hot wife and my family. You know, I, uh, I I know Judd's a workaholic, but now I, wa- I want a selfie. Is Judd actually in like Turks and Caicos right now, just like yeah. enjoying life and <laughs> yes. or, or somewhere in the Hawaii, actually? He's like, you know what? I've seen enough of Sean Manning and Kellen Mond. I'm getting the hell out of here. Phil and Dex can hold it down for a week. He's actually not in the hospital. He did not have an appendectomy. He's enjoying the sun with, with Dawn somewhere. I need a selfie now to see what Judd Zolgat's doing. He's actually just at Bunny's Bar in St. Louis Park. That's <laughs> yeah. where he's yeah. eating wings and drinking Surly. Um so someone, uh, uh, Emma Bell fans, who is a listener and a YouTube commenter, I've, I've seen her pop up in the YouTube comments here. She sent this message a few weeks ago on the Scorn Earth app. And uh, until I've been banished to the basement in our home with COVID, I haven't had time to do this deep dive. But she says a deep dive idea for Mackie. By the end of the 2023 season, Kirk Cousins will have been with the Vikings for six consecutive seasons. So it's been four seasons now, and then this will be five, and then he's mm-hmm. he's locked in through a sixth season. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said in the YouTube comment section that if he hasn't taken the Vikings to the Super Bowl by then, after six years, he needs to go, which others took issue with. So she's fighting Cousins Crusaders in our Purple Daily YouTube comments. So here's my question. I would assume that if a list is compiled of quarterbacks – who started for the same team for at least six consecutive seasons without a Super Bowl appearance, A, very few of them left, uh, very few of them left that team and then went on to win a Super Bowl somewhere else. Okay. Yep. And B, most would agree that these teams should have moved on from these quarterbacks by the sixth season that you kind of you kind of know yeah. by that time. If not before the sixth season, because then they're basically Andy Dalton and Alex Smith types. <laughs> Uh, can you do a deep dive into this? And last night, the answer was yes. In my COVID delirium last night. <laughs> Just sipping on vitamin C, Pedialyte, and, and research and pro football reference. Emergency. Uh, some. By the way, have you shared oh, Mucinex before? Mucinex uh, yes, I, is M- great. Mucinex is really, really sad. I, I, I think I have built up an immunity to NyQuil. Like I, I've taken so much NyQuil in my life that it doesn't really like do recreationally for me. or what? No, I just like anytime I am remotely feeling ill, like I got the sniffles or something, I will take NyQuil before I go to bed. And as I've as I've noticed the last few times I've taken NyQuil, it doesn't help me sleep anymore. But Mucinex, Declan here for Mucinex, love me some Mucinex. <laughs> that can actually uh, do wonders on your immune system. Rattle the cage, man. You know, I got addicted to Afrin one time, like 15 oh, years ago. Unbeknownst. My college roommate. Yes, same thing. Yeah, same you're, thing you, it's, it works magic. You, you mm-hmm. s- a couple sprays in each nostril, and you can you can breathe for like five hours. And, and uh, I don't know, I just like kept using it for two or three weeks, and then eventually my sinuses became dependent on it. And the doctor was like, "How long have you been taking this?" And I was like, "I don't know, like two months." He's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Addicted to never uh, never done real drugs, but Afrin is my Afrin. advice. Oh my god. Anyhow, so by the end of Kirk's current contract. Here's how I kind of figured uh, this deep dive, because this is a really interesting question. So by the end of his current contract, it'll have been six years. But I, I I went more with like the number of starts that you give a guy. So he will have made, if he stays healthy, over 90 starts for the Vikings. I think it's going to be like 97 or 98 or something. So he'll have made 90 starts for the Vikings in those six years. So since 1990, 31 quarterbacks have made 90 or more starts with the same team in succession. So over like a six or seven year period, depending on if there was an injury season in there. Okay. Nine out of the 31 never reached a Super Bowl with their team. So about a little less than one third where you commit to a guy for like six years. He's our guy. That's kind of a long time. Probably getting paid a lot of money. And nine of those 31 never reached a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford with the Lions. Philip Rivers with the Chargers, 
Carson Palmer with the Bengals, Jay Cutler Bears, Mark mm-hmm. Brunel Jaguars in the late wow. 90s, <laughs> Andy Dalton Bengals, Derek Carr Raiders, currently uh, active here with the Raiders on this streak, Tony Romo Cowboys, and then Mark Bulger in the early 2000s oh, with God. the Rams. That's right, yes. So it's not as uncommon, but then I dug a little bit deeper here. I was like, okay, how many of them have never been to a— so you commit six years to a quarterback— a guy that you believe is probably one of the top, you know, 10 or 15 in the league. Otherwise, why would you commit for six years and a lot of money? How many of those 31 never even reached a conference championship game? And the answer is six dating back to 1990. Matthew Stafford with the Lions never right. reached the NFC championship game. Carson Palmer never got there with the Bengals. Um, Tony Romo never got there with the Cowboys. Derek Carr hasn't gotten there with... The Raiders, Mark Bolger had a couple decent seasons, but got bounced in the playoffs and then just fell off a map. And then Andy Dalton. So of that group, Stafford is the only one to actually leave the team, make the yeah. leap, and then win, go to or win a Super Bowl with another team. But as I kind of whittled this down and said, okay, Matthew Stafford, Lions version, you know, Carson Palmer with multiple teams, but with the Bengals. Yeah. That's kind of the bin that Cousins is in right now. He's kind yeah. of in the, like, Carson Palmer 15 years ago, you know, Mark Bulger early 2000s, going to put up some pretty big numbers. The team success, for whatever reason, isn't there. You know, Tony Romo put up, Tony Romo and Kirk Cousins, very different styles. Romo was much more of a freelancer and a, he yeah. was a mobile quarterback. Uh, but, like, monster numbers where they're going to show up in a lot of top 10, top 15 lists of passer rating and yards per game and things like that. But the team success never, never followed. So, like it's, I, I guess thank you, uh, thank you to Emma for posing this question. But it kind of it kind of crystallizes where Kirk is at right now, which is yeah, I mean, awesome dude, Carson Palmer, Tony Romo. Like that's not a terrible bin to be in. But is there another level? Is there is there a way for him to get out of that group and into the group of the Matt Ryan had the big pop up season, had a three touchdown lead in a Super Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. But the first step is getting to the conference championship game, which he has not done with the Vikings right. or with Washington. You know, it's funny. I, I went down a, a rabbit hole after our friend PFF Eric tweeted out this fact because because uh, Jake the Snake Plummer, who's just one of Declan's, my, one of all my 10 favorite quarterbacks, this random QB that I always gravitated towards, probably because yeah. I played with the Broncos a lot, like in early those early video games. And he was he's living his best life now being like growing mushrooms. He was on the Levitard podcast. It's just, yeah. He's li- he, he literally is growing mushrooms, just living hallucinogenics, living his best life. I think it's right. amazing. Good for him. But um, mm-hmm. Eric pointed out how the Broncos decided to move on from Jake Plummer after getting to the AFC Championship game. They then drafted Jay Cutler. You ran with Cutler for a few years before he went with the Bears. But basically, the Broncos made the conscious decision that, hey, even though we were on the doorstep of getting to a Super Bowl, and in fact, I think they even went to maybe two AFC Championship games with Jake Plummer, um, they had some successful seasons. Plummer, not the same QB as Cousins, but a stable guy who can put up some decent numbers. And they made the conscious decision, hey, we got to move off of this guy. It's The ceiling has been reached. There isn't another layer to it. We have to go draft a young guy now. Cutler ended up not being the guy for the Broncos. They ended up obviously getting to a few more Super Bowls with Peyton Manning in his later careers. But they made that decision that, hey, we see what this ceiling is. Now, I can't remember if the Broncos were a team that had a new regime that came in to make that decision to move off a of plumber to go get Jay Cutler. But they they made the idea that, hey, Plummer's been fine. Like, he's probably the 17th to 12th best quarterback in the NFL at that time when he was with Denver. But they knew they couldn't reach that step. And they, they said, we're going to go draft a young guy in Jay Cutler who's hopefully going to be a stud for us. And I think that's what's so interesting about the Vikings decision here with Kwesi and KOC that, all right, they, they've committed, at least in the short term, to Cousins. The, the, the fear of the unknown was too great for them, right? That's what we, basically Kwesi and Kevin O'Connell have been saying throughout their first offseason together that, hey, moving off a quarterback is a pretty dangerous commitment. But also, they are hitching their wagon to this guy in hopes that, number one, they can get more out of him. And then, two, that something hasn't been unlocked and that they see him as their franchise guy. Now, good for them, I think, for not extending him super long term, right? Like they just gave him basically another ironclad one year extension after this season. I think that was a smart move. But I am curious what happens to the 2022 Vikings. And if they get to a divisional round or even a conference championship game, does that change the commitment to Cousins? Does that make them want to maybe move off of him because they saw the ceiling of that? I think it, it, the the craziest thing about K, K, Kwesi and KOC is 
next season in 2023, that's probably going to be the pop year, right? Like, I, I, the Vikings should still be a 9-10 to 10 win football team this year. Probably should be a wild card team if things go right. But next year is when the when the expectations probably get heightened unless they're just a complete disaster this year, which I don't see them happening. But th- that's that's what Kwasi Qua- Qua- and KOC get to figure out. Is Cousins their guy that they want to commit to long-term after the 2022 season? Yeah, I think it's fair to say, and again, every, anytime we talk about Cousins, I feel like it all comes back to the the things around him that need to be better or perfect. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of really good things here. There's some... I would put the Vikings skill position player set up against almost any team in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Their running back depth, their top two wide receivers, top three wide receivers. The offensive line has more depth, should be better this season. You, it looks like you have a franchise left tackle. The, the offensive system, the communication, everything. So is it perfect? No. Do they still have some questions at center? Yes. But I, I do think it's fair to say if he doesn't, or let me say this, if the team doesn't, reach the NFC Championship game at some point either in 2022 or 2023 by the end of this current contract, and then he's going to be 35 years old by the end of that contract, you've got your answer. There's no there's no need to keep, as you get into your you know the back half of your 30s, there's no need to keep. And I think, I think he would probably say that too. I think he's going to want to cash checks as long as he wants to. But if you commit to a quarterback for top three, top five money to the salary cap, which he's the third highest paid player to the cap, in the NFL for six years. And as a team, you're unable to build something that gets to the NFC championship game. It's probably time to try something different. Uh, I will say he is better than Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer was yeah, j- like they moved, but the principle is the, is the same, mm-hmm. which is, Hey, this is a pretty good quarterback. And at the time, I think, I think uh, and I'm looking back here because Jake Plummer spent like seven years in Arizona six or seven years, and then went to Denver. And he had his best season. He was a pro bowler in 2005. And then 2006, they took a, a little bit of a step back, but they decided, okay, like, we don't we don't need to pump any more years into this. It's not working. Maybe he's too expensive. Let's draft our next guy. Um, and then Cutler didn't turn out to be the guy that they thought to. But in general, to Emma's point here, yes, if you commit to a quarterback for six years and your team hasn't gone to the NFC Championship game, I think you have. I think you have your answer at that point. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I I think the Vikings have championship obviously aspirations with this new regime. They want to be the team that finally gets to a Super Bowl. It's been forever for them. Um, but finding that quarterback, man, and finding the quarterback that can get you there is tough. And you know, Joe Burrow was the rook was the second year guy who was going to be a franchise game changing player for Cincinnati. Matthew Stafford was the guy who was was basically being dreaded in in Detroit and with that Lions team and and the Rams said no there's something here we can we can mold it around him. That, those are your two paths. Can can you be a game ma- game managing quarterback that everything around the quarterback can lift you up, or can you find the rookie QB that can carry you there? I think last year's Super Bowl saw those two blueprints fold out, and I'm curious if the Vikings can be one of those two teams going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are people saying about the Minnesota Vikings? I've got something inter- interesting here from ESPN.com, but uh, why don't you throw a shout out to your favorite fantasy football website, Declan? That would be my friends at Underdog Fantasy, the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports. Uh, you know, they, they have some great pick 'em options. They have some great fantasy football drafts. In fact, I've been talking with my friends at Underdog Fantasy, working on creating some fantasy football leagues during the season that we can do right here at Score North with the listeners. That's right. If you want to get in on some fantasy football with myself, uh, join Underdog Fantasy now. With the Underdog Fantasy app, they'll match your first deposit up to $100. That's right, first deposit up to 100 bucks, so a free 100 bucks if you join with them. Uh, they have great pick em options. Also, not just NFL. They have some PGA things. They have MLB stuff. You can mix and match your parlays. It's it's literally reinvented myself for fantasy football. I retired, and now I'm Brett Favre. I'm coming back, baby. I want to stick it back to my former team. So Underdog Fantasy has helped me doing that. Go download the Underdog Fantasy app. Uh, Our friends at Equity Partners are helping to make the house selling process 100% hassle-free. When you partner with Equity Partners, uh, first things first, they will help fix up your home to maximize the value of it, whether it's simple fixes to total remodels. They will help you get the most out of your home. The second great thing here is uh, when you partner with Equity Partners, you can put offers in on your next home, non-contingent on the sale of your current home, which is very convenient uh, you can find out more at EquityPartnersMN.com, EquityPartnersMN.com, or call 612-999-2244. Also, hello to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been around for over 100 years, helping businesses with risk management tools and resources 
It's like having a great offensive line for your business. Federated's corporate culture is grounded in equity, integrity, teamwork, and respect. And these four cornerstones create the foundation that supports all interactions and decision-making. Find out how Federated can help your business at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. What are people saying about the Minnesota Vikings? ESPN.com for the, I don't know, I think it's like the 10th year they've done this. They have ranked all 32 teams by their under 25 talent in 2022. So your young crop of players, and there's a bunch of different criteria here. Uh, they're, I believe they're getting most of this from Football Outsiders, which is a football analytics platform. And so they've created these rankings based on a combination of factors. Number of starts made by players under 25, the quality of play of players under 25, um, relative importance of position. So if you have a great under 25 quarterback, it's better than having a great under 25 safety, for example. And then expected key starters and reserves under 25 and a few other things here. All right. The Cowboys have the best crop of under hmm. 25 players because they've got guys like Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs, CD Lamb. Um, I think Dak has graduated this category. The Vikings are 14th on this list, down from 12th in 2021. And they list two blue chip under 25 players on the roster Justin Jefferson yep. and Christian Derrissaw. Okay. Notable players who have graduated from this list are KJ Osborne and Oli Udo, although I don't know that Oli okay. Udo was helping you <laughs> on this list okay. before. And uh, the write up says in a pre draft news conference, New Vikings GM Quasi Adofa Mensa told reporters he wanted a team. Wanted the team in a competitive rebuild, which explains his apparently contradictory decisions to extend Kirk Cousins and then also trade back four times in the 2022 draft to net 10 total draft picks. Uh, they do mention Lewis Seen as being someone to watch on this list and also left guard Ezra Cleveland, Hail. who has been fairly solid as a left guard. Uh, Cam Dantzler gets some love in here, and so does Andrew Booth Jr. So um I think what I like about, and that now like Brian O'Neill has graduated from this, but if you want to go under 27 talent, I think the Vikings are probably higher up on this list. They've got some key positions locked up with young players who are either under 25 or in their prime right now. You got your star receiver. KJ Osborne's a good solid number three receiver. He did graduate from the under 25 list. I think you've got your two offensive tackles in both Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill. And you've got some really good, promising secondary players on defense, too. Lewis Seen, yeah. Andrew Booth, Cam Dantzler, uh, Cam Bynum as well. And then whatever they get out of this year's draft class, too. I mean, Brian Asamoa could be someone that we talk about on this list in maybe a year from now. So um, I'll trust that they're 14th when it comes to 25 and under. But in general, I like what they're doing with some of the talented young players at key positions on this team. Yeah, and then this is where you know having a cost-effective salary cap and having guys on your rookie scale contracts that can be immediate in, immediate contributors for you is is a benefit, right? And I I, I know we're probably going to talk about the this draft class on Mackie and Judd. We have some football statements to get into as well later on on Mackie and Judd and on Purple Daily and whatnot. But I I think uh, this rookie draft class that they have coming up here can be immediately they can make they can make impacts immediately for this 2022 season. Um, you know, Lewis Seen might not be an immediate starter because he's behind Cam Bynum and Harrison Smith, but I also don't think that rules out him making impacts on the field when he's called upon. If Andrew Booth is indeed, you know, okay with that rolled ankle, I think he actually might have a chance to be a legitimate cornerback option for them. They have some real talents on their rookie scales uh, contracts right now, but also guys like Justin Jefferson are, are obviously is such a game changing player that that makes things even easier for them. And having, you know, two tackles, I know Brian O'Neill's past the 25 mark, but having two pillar tackles, man, like the Vikings haven't had that luxury in such a no. long time. And if Christian Derrissaw is indeed the guy who he was, you know, once he finally was active and healthy last year, my God, that makes building out your offensive line that much easier. It's a good thing to have that the Vikings have so many young players that can make immediate contributions to this year's team. Yes. Uh, at the bottom of this list, the Rams are 32 because they've just mortgaged all their first round yeah. picks. They've traded they've traded assets for, you know, down the road to win now. And it worked. You know, they won a Super Bowl. So I don't think they're going to regret the the dry spell that I'm and yeah, I'm guessing Sean McVay. There's been rumblings that he might retire at some point. I wouldn't be shocked if he goes into early retirement, early retirement, quote unquote, meaning just kind of bail once the uh, 
once the ship starts to go down beneath the surface. The Titans are 31st on this list. They've been really good the last five or six years. The Cardinals are 30th, wow. which is interesting. The Raiders are 29th. Seahawks are 28th. Seahawks are in a really tough spot because they're in a rebuild and they don't really have great young talent outside of maybe DK Metcalf. So um, the Packers are 27th. Any team hmm. at the bottom of this list is in danger of going into a three or four year rebuild unless they find the next franchise quarterback. Because the Packers probably showed up on this list at times in the early 2000s and then they just stumbled into Aaron Rodgers in the draft and he helped immediately jumpstart them going forward in like 2008. Um, but the Packers being 27th on this list and the Rams being 32nd, you know, those teams are going to go off the cliff at some point. I think the Raiders one is the one that's most alarming just because they got so many picks from the Khalil Mack trade and, you know, they kind of botched all of those. They literally botched, I think, Josh Jacobs. And by the way, taking a running back fourth overall, not exactly the uh, best strategy to do. You know, the Raiders one's probably the most damning. They've had so many draft picks over the last three or four years that have either been cut. Um, I know there were some off the field issues with a few of them too, but just completely botched that. And, you know, the Rams said, essentially bleep those picks. That was kind of their motto with with Snead and, and McVay. And yeah, it worked out for them. They got their Super Bowl. So I think a lot of fans aren't going to be completely upset about that. But botching those picks from the Raiders, I think that one's probably the one that sticks out to me the most. Yeah, they. Uh, I feel like the Raiders have just, for 20 years, let's just go draft fast athletic yeah. players. <laughs> yeah. 25 slots or more higher than they should go and and pray that it works out. Um so there you go. The, the Vikings are kind of middle of the pack in terms of under 25 talent in the NFL. You know what's not middle of the pack is the Meadows at Mystic if you're looking for a great golf course. Now that's that's, right. that's top of the pack. That is top of the pack. You know, it's just an easy drive down from the metro area here in the Twin Cities down 169 to go to the Meadows at Mystic Lake. And even though uh, we're getting into August, we got fall golf coming up, which is, for my opinion, the best time for fall golf. There's nothing worse than being too hot. You're sweating off a course, right? Now I get the fall golf season. You got the long sleeves on, a little quarter zip action. I get my PJ Fleck option on right there. Gotta love that. Uh, They have a full service golf shop as well. Great Meadows Bar and Grill. You can book your tee times now at golfthemeadows.com to learn more. Go book your tee time at the Meadows at Mystic Lake. It's golfthemeadows.com. Uh, Judd, very appreciative of everyone's well wishes. He is uh, grinding away in the hospital trying to trying to get back. It's funny, you know, he he hits us up on Saturday and says, you know, hey, so I'm in the hospital and I'm um, probably going to give my phone to a family member, my sister or something, but just want you guys to know that I'm having an emergency appendectomy. We're like, oh my God, dude, are you... what? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Take as much time as you need. He live tweeted the first half of the preseason game, waiting to be rolled into the operating room at like 8:30 p.m. Yeah. on Saturday, and uh, and then he told us, I think the next day. So I'm for sure going to be in the hospital through Monday. Uh, Tuesday might be a stretch, but like Wednesday we'll see. It's like no, dude. You... <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Maybe he can. Maybe he can do some uh, write that down predictions. You know, from a gurney or something. I don't know. I know I'm going to get a purple daily minute with him in his hospital gown. I just, I know what's going to happen. I, I, he's going to be too stir crazy in there. He's locked into a hospital room. He's going to send me some type of situation like that. I wouldn't be shocked at all. But Judd Burrow, you know, both uh, Joe Burrow had a, had the same thing happen to him recently. Yeah. And now Judd Zolgat. So both uh, just a couple Super Bowl winning quarterbacks just trying to get healthy and get ready for the regular season. Dude, man. Joe Burrow was just, he was, he was riding around practice in a golf cart. So when the when the players were doing their little calisthenics or whatever, their warm ups, you know, running across the field, he would just be driving in a golf cart next to the players. That's what I want Judd to do. Just just you don't even have to talk. You just be on camera with your little uh, hospital gown and your uh, antibiotic IV. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect to uh, Gabe Henderson at Vikings.com, I think he can use that like side by side, whatever that four wheeler is that he does with like the karaoke's that yeah. Gabe uses. Give that to Judd, I think, for uh, for training camp and now practice updates. Uh, or let's like, like let let Judd ride in there with you. Let him give some takes here from from the cart. Judd would probably appreciate that too. He gets out of the sun a little bit. I'm sure he could also uh, rover around a little more and, and see more of practice. I'd be a fan of that for Judd. Yes. So uh, so we'll uh, we'll keep you guys posted. And hopefully Juggs is back at full strength at some point here. I guess you, but you might as well get the COVID and the uh, appendectomy out of the way before the regular yeah. season starts here. We've still got a, a couple weeks left. And, hey, the Vikings have a new backup quarterback, Nick Mullins. So, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And we don't want to die ourselves.